Sally here and welcome to Tuesday Teaching Tips on what is a very damp day over here in the UK. Now I was teaching yesterday afternoon as I do and I've got um, a, a lovely afternoon of teaching as we all do have you know um, and one of my pupils who's sort of uh, about nine or ten I think and he's at late elementary so he's grade one grade two level and he's learning a piece to play in a performance in a couple of weeks time and he was playing it through and there was one place that he was having problems with and uh, he looked at me and he said you know Sally the problem is with the transitions and I went yeah, absolutely, Jake. The, the problem is with the transitions. And um, he'd identified, what really impressed me was he'd identified not only where the problem was, but what the problem was. And this word transition just kind of came out. So he was having problems with moving from one place where he had to play to the very next bar where he had, his hands had to be somewhere else. So really impressed by this word transition and the fact that he thought through the problem. and. This is something I really like, I love to see in my students. I love to see them thinking through the problems that they have in, in their own learning process. So here's five steps to help you do exactly that, to stand back and to get your pupils really engaged in that learning process. So that's the very first one, actually, stand back. So when you hear your pupils play something, there is a big, um, uh, tendency for us to rush in and give advice what we call the advice monster over here in curious piano teachers so stand back and the second thing is don't give the answers don't give advice all the time so stand back first and then don't give the answers just keep quiet for a second instead number three is to ask the question so what is the problem so what is the problem and then you have to, number four, listen to the response. And this means, again, standing back and giving the student at least four or five seconds to come up with a response. Did you know the average time that teachers wait for a response? And this is teachers generally, not just piano teachers, but the average time we wait is 0.9 of a second. Not even a second, but 0.9 of a second. And we have to give them a little bit more time to gather their thoughts. Some of them don't have words just immediately springing to mind. So stand back, count to five and see what comes out because a lot of them will come up with something or other, okay? So ask the question, what is the problem? And then stand back and listen to their answer. And then of course you can start to have a discussion about it. And the final point is, number five, is to ask another question. So what could you do to improve that? So what could you do to improve that? And again, the could is really important. You're asking the student to engage in thinking about what they could do rather than you giving them advice all the time. So that can really, really dramatically change the way that your student learns. I mean, really dramatically by standing back, by listening, and by asking the right questions that, that open up them thinking about what the problem is. Because of course, you know, there are 10,080 minutes, did you know, in a week, 10,080 minutes. Um, students tend to be with us for about 10,050 of those. So what are they going to do in those 10,050 minutes when you're not there? If you just give them answers all the time, then they, they're going to be really um, floating around in their practice time without really knowing how to um, secure what it is they do. Give them um, questions that engage them to think about their problems, and actually they're going to be much, much better um, sorted when they go home and do their practice. So five things, just very quickly to finish, let's just go through that. Stand back is number one. Number two is don't give the answers. Number three is instead ask a question. So what is the problem there? So what is the problem there? Number four, stand back again. Listen to their answers. Listen to their answers and give them time. And number five is another question. And what could you do to improve that? Okay. Those questions work for me. Try them out this afternoon in your teaching, wherever you are, and for the rest of this week, and just see the difference that it can make to your students and how it makes you feel and how it makes your students feel.
Okay. Happy teaching wherever you are. Thank you so much for joining me. I can see Jen is there. I can see Robin's there. Denise was saying hello as well. So thank you all so much wherever you are in the world. Happy teaching. Bye for now. <laughs>